on, come on, I'm waiting. What for? Waiting for you to prove that that elephant was my fault, too. Your fault? Everything that boy has done for the past five years is my fault, according to you. I never blamed you for Jimmy's behavior. Oh, you did, too. Oh, no. I'm sure all those words he uses he learns at Harvard. I know he never heard any slang in this house. Are you ripping me? Cut it out. What time did he come in last night? Of course, I wasn't here, but Hayes said... And I'm sure it was quite early. Uh. Yes, I remember now. Hayes said that... Is the motorcycle okay? Sure, it's okay. I hate to go. The Jimmy got in about 10.30. Well, so long. You know that Mr. Barnes is a nice fella for a foreigner? Yes, sir. For a foreigner, he's a nice fella. Well, he's really not such a foreigner. Of course, he went to Harvard, hmm? but he was born when he was in Europe. How was that? Well, you see, his father married his mother when he was over there. His father was his uncle's brother. Huh. It's a small world, ain't it? <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, Gray. Oh, Mr. Barnes, please don't go in there. Well, good night. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, I'm tired, Gray. I'm so tired. Well, I'll help you to your room. Oh, that's kind. It's very kind. I, I help you too. Huh? Now, now take it easy, Gray. You're not in such a bad condition. Just, just keep your chin up. <laughs> Good night, darling. I do apologize. <laughs> no offense, man. Just a case of uh, mistaken identity. Good night. What am I going to do? Nothing. Nothing? You're too fond of him. Besides, that's what you wanted him to be. I wanted him to be. A playboy feeding $10 bills to elephants? Remember that day you did in America? All I remember is <laughs> that fur hat. Yes, you didn't like that fur hat. You wanted to go to a museum. You didn't like that either. So you put him on a merry-go-round, and he's been there ever since. Yeah, and he's got a swell collection of brass rings. He's graduated and came into the firm ready to work. Yeah, that's true. You made him a glorified office boy. Five days off a week and a thousand dollars for candy, chewing gum, and... and uh, incidentals. You're right, Linda. I've been too soft with it. Too hard one day, too soft the next. Simon Legree on Monday? And Mother McCree on Tuesday, yeah. Well, I'll fix that. I'll... Now, taking him out of your will and putting him back. That won't do any good either. You've tried that four times this year and it's had no effect on him. Well, it's liable to have an effect pretty darn quick. I'm on my last legs and they've quit on me. Don't say that. It's true and I'm glad of it. <clears throat> I need to rest. You have been thinking a good deal about Jimmy, haven't you? Not particularly. You are... Now, don't be coy. Tell the truth. You love him. Yes, I love him. So do I. I know you do. Would you marry him? Would I? Linda, to tie up with a grand girl like you would be the making of him. E.J., Jimmy Barnes has known me for five years and pays no more attention to me than... than the pattern on the rug. I'm not a woman to him. I'm a piece of office equipment. Just about as exciting as a typewriter. He's crazy. You're the finest woman and the prettiest girl he'll ever meet. Mr. Barnes, I agree with you. Goodbye, Linda Gray. I, uh... I've got a lot of important thinking to do. Run along now. Goodbye.
Yeah? No, no. I'd rather not talk to anyone today. No, I won't take any calls. Yes, Mrs. Duncan. Come in. There are a number of reporters outside. Yes, I know. You take this down, then type six copies and distribute them. Type them yourself, please. This is confidential. I understand. $20,000 to Leland Stanford for additions to the law library. Yes, $50,000 to the general hospital for an X-ray clinic. Yes, sir. $10,000 each to Patrick Hayes, his butler. His chauffeur, George Nelson, and his cook, Annie McGuire. Oh, that was nice. He was kind. People who didn't know him thought he was hard and crotchety, but... I'm sorry, Mr. Duncan. To his nephew, James Delaney Barnes. Yes? The sum of one dollar. Oh, no, Mr. Duncan. He didn't mean to. Oh, yes, Linda, he meant to. He knew what he was doing. I drew this will the day before he died. The day before? But I was there that afternoon, I remember, because I was there till three. He called me shortly after three. I think he knew he was going. The stroke seized him soon after I left. He said he had decided it was the best thing he could do for Jimmy. The only way his plans for Jimmy's future could be carried out. But to cut him off like that, he would have changed his mind. That wasn't what he meant to do. The residuary estate, amounting approximately to four million dollars, goes to you. To me? Yes, child, to you. To my faithful secretary, Linda Gray. Oh, no. Yes, Linda. But that's... It's ridiculous. It's crazy. He didn't know what he was doing. He said he was changing his will because of a talk you and he had had. But I didn't mean... Oh, no. No, Mr. Duncan. I won't take it. That's Jimmy's money. Oh, you're upset, Linda. You can't make a decision as serious as this without a great deal of thought. But I don't need to think. I can't take it. Now, but Linda... Mr. Duncan? Yes, Jane? I'm going away for a couple of months. I'm going to Honolulu. Jimmy, uh, your uncle's will is to be read. I know I won't leave until tomorrow, but... I don't want to stay around here while it's probated and all that. I don't have to tell you how I feel. Uh, James, you... Well, will... sir, will you please advance me about 5,000 this afternoon? I have to get the tickets. Uh, James, under the circumstances... Uh, uh, I'm a rather busy man just now. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Miss Gray and I. Oh, hello, Gray. Well, an hour will be soon enough for that money, so thanks. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot. Uh, there are some bells. <laughs> some pretty big bells, I guess. I ought to set up before I leave. Better make it, oh... Well, 55,000 will cover it. 55? Yes, they are pretty big. Uh, well, I'll leave them on your desk, Gray. Do you want me to get the tickets, too? Yes, will you do that? A nice suite for Miss Marlowe and a room and bath for me. Uh, make out the checks today and I sign them. Thanks, Mr. Duncan. I'll take that money. Good, good. Now you're being sensible. Well, I, I'm not so sure about that, but I'll take it. On one condition. To the aforementioned Patrick Hayes. I hereby bequeath to my faithful chauffeur, George Nelson, $10,000. To my faithful cook, Annie McGuire, $10,000. I hereby bequeath to my nephew, James Delaney Barnes, the sum of $1. After the payment of these bequests and all just claims against my estate, I hereby will and bequeath all properties, both real and personal, of which I stand possessed, to my faithful secretary, Linda Gray. Signed, Edward James Barnes. Witnessed by Sarah Middleton and John Harvey and Dee. Congratulations, Clay. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, I can't say I expected that wheel to stop where it did, but... No, it, it was rather a surprise, wasn't it? Let's say a shock. What are you going to do? Well, going out and get me a drink. That's about what you thought I'd do, isn't it? Yes, that's just about what I expected. Well, still going to Honolulu, Mr. Barnes? No, I'm... I'm afraid I'd get tired of rowing after the first thousand miles. Still wise, Craggy, eh? <laughs> but your face when you heard the news. One dollar. 
One lonely dollar. Very rude. Now look, Ray. You got the money and I didn't. But you needn't keep rubbing it in. Order those tickets, Gray. Write those checks, Gray. A suite for Miss Marlowe, Gray. And all the time I sat knowing. <laughs> I've had four million dollars worth of fun already. Well, this just shows that you never really know people. Here you have been around this office for a year. Five years. All right, five years. Looking and acting like a... A mouse? Yes, a mouse. And all the time well, you were... Well, what about it? What about it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we'll see what about it. Duncan, can I contest this well? Well, I, I'm really surprised at you, Miss Gray. See me in the morning. I'll be here, early. I've always wondered what upheaval of nature would get you here early in the morning. I'm so sorry I shan't be here to see it. How was I? Fine. How was I? Well, now I see the reporters. Wait for me, Charlie. Oh, just a minute. You'll get your chance. Now, one more question. What do you plan to do, Miss Gray? Everything. <laughs> Charlie, let's get one of her standing up on the desk. That's it. Throwing away your notebook. <laughs> Captain, goodbye, dull care. Give it to us. Whee! And a baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get one over here by the window. Gentlemen, please. No, no. Looking out like you were giving the world the once over. You know. Come on, life. I know. Oh, oh give me a great yeah. idea. Gentlemen, no, no. <laughs> please. Oh. Oh, excuse it, Pop. Pop, uh, one on the globe, miss, uh, with your finger pointing to, uh, to New York. Hold it. Oak. Oak. Well, what's the program for New York, Miss Gray? Well, I'm going to see all the plays and all the uh, night spots. I'm going to have a maid named Celeste and long, long fingernails, because I'm never going to typewrite anymore. They break off when you typewrite, you know. I'm going to have monograms on my lingerie. Oh, that's great oh, stuff, Miss Gray. Give us some more of that, will you, please? Can't but somebody stop, stop her? Every day. Lots stop her? She hasn't started yet. I think I'll have a silver fox cape and breakfast in bed. A bed with Irving blanket. Linda, these men are reporters. I know. Hold it. But they'll print all this. Yes, with pictures. Adam, <laughs> baby. <laughs> the Cinderella girl. Her voice took on a new note of joy when she spoke of romance. Someday you'll come riding, my friends. West. Great. It's like seeing your Sunday school teacher with a snoot for Well, it certainly is a new light on Miss Gray. Well, what about breaking the well? Oh, yes, yes. Well, the uh, usual thing is to claim that the testator was of unsound mind. But I'd have to say that Uncle Ed was of unsound mind. Mm, that's the usual thing. But it's out of court. He was a grand guy. He had a fine mind. But th there must be something else. Well, you might charge uh, undue influence. Charge it Gray? Oh, no, no. I wouldn't want to do that. I guess he thought a lot of Gray all right, but no woman could wind E.J. around her little finger. <laughs> no. Well, Jim, if you're convinced that your uncle knew what he was doing, why contest the will? Why contest the will? Did you hear yesterday crowing over me? Why, Contest? Oh, look here, Mr. Duncan. I just read you that, that tripe in the paper. Grace lost her mind. She has gone haywire. She, oh, listen, she has splashed the name of Barnes over every newspaper. I, uh, uh, I think most of the newspapers have learned that name already. What do you mean? Me? Well, listen, that was different. I mean, you can't compare this. This is terrible. Yes, yes, I understand, my boy. Now, fortunately, there is a legal loophole. A clean loophole? So I won't have to say anything about Uncle Ed or Gray? Yes, a good, clean technicality. One of the witnesses, uh, the trained nurse, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Middleton, was not in the room when the doctor witnessed the will. The witnesses didn't sign in each other's presence? No. Well, let's get hold of that nurse. Uh, well, I'm afraid she's out of town right now. Well, let's get her the moment she comes back. Didn't sign in each other's presence. That's perfect. Oh, wait a minute. I have this book in my office. I... Yeah, I... Get it. Uh... Call the nurse, Miss Sarah Middleton, and tell her not to forget that she's out of town till October 1st. Yep. Here it is. And in each other's presence. Oh, Duncan, this is swell. It's in the back. Uh, James, I just telephoned, and that nurse will be out of town till October 1st. She's going around the world with a patient. All the way around. That will be about six months. Six months? Well, what if that's the best we can do? 
It isn't as if I didn't have my job here. Unfortunately, my boy, you haven't. I haven't? Oh, Dabney and I are retiring. Retiring? You mean that Barnes and Duncan are going out of business? Yes. Your uncle was the mainspring of the firm. <laughs> I haven't had any real fun for 40 years, and I intend to have it now. Yes, but my case, contesting the well. James, your case comes under the head of fun. I'll handle it myself. Now you understand everything. Everything? I'll keep in touch about the middle of June, I think. Right, middle of June. Oh. Oh. Your bag's all on there. Oh. Oh, oh. Never mind. Thank you, sir. Well, goodbye. You've been a dear. You know I'm grateful. Oh, nonsense. I haven't had so much fun since I defended that fan dancer. <laughs> but Gaffney's worried. He thinks you're... Uh... Crazy? No, no. I don't like slang. Uh, let's say just a little bit screwy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Notice the drop in temperature? There are icicles all around town, everywhere I've been. When that well was red, my sun went down. I've looked for a job in every law office in San Francisco. I've been stalled off and brushed off and frozen out by every secretary. I wonder if I could comb some beach till October. You know, I'm worried about Linda Gray. I am worried, but not about Gray. I'm afraid she's fallen into the hands of some unscrupulous person. I honestly don't know how I can hold out until October. James, you know that business block your uncle built? Sure. It's the most valuable property. Oh, what do I care? It's none of my business. And yesterday, I got this wire. What do you think about selling the Market Street block? I wouldn't care. What? With a boom just starting? That girl is crazy. <laughs> yes. This is uh, from the Daily Chronicle. Tanag heiress goes bountiful, takes 500 orphans to ball game, buys popcorn by the bail. Well, that's okay. Kids like popcorn. Yes, but she's going into the business. What business? Listen to this wire. Delighted to find pop, popcorn, and peanut concessions at all ball game circuses and fights can be bought for 500,000. Pop, popcorn, and peanuts? And, uh, this one. Syndicate forming here to recover sunken treasure. What? Well, do you realize what she's doing? But by October, there won't be 10 cents left. That's what I fear. Well, can't we do something? Can't we restrain her or enjoin her? Why, she can't go around and spend the barn's money looking for, for something popcorn. Yes, James, she can. I don't dare start contesting that will until that nurse comes back. But what shall I do? Well, I don't know with her in New York. Unless, uh... Oh, but no, no, you wouldn't want to do that. I know what I'm going to do. Girl must think money grows on trees. Oh, uh, Mr. Duncan, could you... Uh, yeah, could you use a couple of hundred dollars? Could I? But just as in advance. Oh, certainly. I've got a great idea. I'm going to New York. Really? When? Right now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Here's your hat. Oh. Uh, thanks. Linda Gray, please. And uh, whom shall I announce? Mr. James Barnes. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Sweet Tatina. Will you check my bags, please? Uh, Mr. James Barnes to see Miss Gray. Oh, oh yes. Send him up. He's here. Get the dress. He's downstairs. He's on his way up. Oh, dear. My hair all right. My nails too long. Oh, dear. Oh, hurry. Oh, hurry. Please, please, please. Oh, darn it. Darn it. My hair all over. Oh, there he is. Let him in and, and please come back. <laughs> is Grace room? Yes, sir. Miss Gray will be out in a few minutes, sir. Please sit down. Thanks. I'll stand. Yes, sir.
Just wait a minute. How do I look? Do I look all right? All right? All right, you're exquisite. Oh, we've only he thinks so. Suppose he doesn't notice me. Well, he's got ice in his head, hasn't he? Now, darling, go out there and take him by storm. I'll try. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Hello, Gray. Hello, Jimmy. Nice to see you in New York. I had no idea. Well, uh, won't you... Let's get down to business, Gray. Duncan showed me those wires. He did? Yeah. Was he surprised at how much I've done in these few short weeks? Yeah. He was surprised. I was surprised, too. You've gone crazy. Oh, Jimmy, you mean... I mean, you're squandering the fortune Uncle has spent all his life to build up on the most cockeyed lot of wildcat schemes I ever heard of in my life. Well, of course, that's only your opinion. My opinion. Anyone with an ounce of common sense would feel the same way. Well, I'm sorry. All I can do is to rely on my own judgment. You see, <laughs> it is my money. Yes, it's your money for the time being. Oh, Jimmy, you don't mean you're going ahead with that silly old suit. I mean that by October 1st, the money will be mine. Does Mr. Duncan know about this court thing? Duncan is preparing the case. Oh, my. Well, I can have a lot of fun between now and October. But don't let's talk about money. I want to hear what you've been doing. Celeste! Gray, who has been advising you? Advising me? Why, nobody. <gasps> Except one of the bellboys. A bellboy? He's very remarkable. And he has a great talent for finance. <coughs> yes, Mum. You may serve tea now, uh, Celeste. Yes, Mum. Celeste? Yes, I've always wanted a maid named Celeste, so I call her Celeste. Her name's Maggie. Maggie? Celeste. Mm -hmm. Look, Ray, let's skip tea, if you don't mind. I didn't come 3,000 miles for Orange Pico. Now, whether you know it or not, you need a financial advice. Oh, no, Jimmy. I'm doing beautifully. I enjoy spending my money and investing it. Now, look. No, please. no, no. I don't want a financial advice. Oh, thank you, Celeste. Sure you won't join me? Gray, you can't go around taking advice from bellboys. Now, will you do this? Will you agree to consult me before you buy any more gold bricks? Oh, I couldn't impose on you. No, honestly, Jimmy, I don't need any financial advice. The only help I need is a sort of uh, bookkeeper secretary. Bookkeeper secretary, huh? Yes. It isn't a very good position, really. It's more like a job. I'll take it. You? Yeah. Oh, no, you couldn't do that. Besides, you don't know shorthand or anything. Oh, I can manage without shorthand. I can write fast if you talk slow. But, Jimmy, the salary. I didn't figure on paying more than uh, $75 a week. That's what your Uncle Ed paid me, so of course... I take it. But, Jimmy, you couldn't stick to it for a week. I stick to it like a bird. Well, do change your mind about the cinnamon toast. It's excellent. Gray, do I get the job? No. Yes. No, Jimmy. Yes, Gray. Well, all right. Okay. I say right here in the hotel. Well, I forgot to tell you. A room and board, that's part of the job. What? And I'll fix up this little room here for you as an office. Well, it looks like an office now. Uh, well, I, uh, I sometimes get sort of hungry for a typewriter. All right, I'll be in the morning, early. I never get up till ten. Well, I'll be here at nine. Say, there's something different about you. Oh, is there, Jimmy? Yes, you look, uh, well, I guess it's just that you are more rested. You must have put on some weight. Goodbye. Hello, Mr. Dibbs, please. Mr. Dibbs, this is Miss Gray. My secretary, Mr. Barnes, is on his way downstairs. He's to have that room I picked out for him. Yes, I mean that one. Thank you. Put on weight. I believe Miss Gray has... Oh, uh, yes, 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 Mr. Barnes. Miss Gray selected your room. Five, uh, twenty. Boy. Boy, get those bags that you checked and show Miss Gray's secretary to room five, twenty. Yes. Um, are the help in a separate wing or do we live in the same hotel? Oh, uh, maids and uh, valets uh, in the annex and secretaries and companions here. Well, that's a break. Yes. Here you are, sir, room 520. Okay. Say. Oh, 
Don't turn on the lights. <laughs> Let's enjoy the sunshine. That's better. Where are you? Right here, sir. I guess the hotel wouldn't mind if I grew mushrooms here, would they? I don't know anything about that, sir, but they don't allow dogs in the rooms. Scared of the SPCA, huh? Yeah. Huh? Well, uh, run along, Sonny. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, oh, uh, do you write many letters? Yes, sir. Well, have some stamps. How do you like Hollywood, Miss Marlowe? Oh, very much. Did you get in the movies, Miss Marlowe? Well, uh, well, of course, I much prefer the stage. I see. Uh, going to New York to do a play? Well, oh, yes, yes, I am. A marvelous play. What's the name of it? Huh? Oh, well, there are lots of plays I uh, haven't decided yet. You sure you're not joining your San Francisco friend, Jimmy Barnes? Is he in New York? Didn't you know he was in New York? Oh, yes, oh, of course. I just didn't know you did. What's the lowdown on Jimmy, Miss Marlowe? Did Miss Grace split the money with him? Oh, do you think so? <clears throat> I uh, cannot discuss personal affairs with the press. <laughs> hey, there's Monty. Hey, Joe, come on. Thank you. Oh, pardon. Pardon, Miss Oh, that's quite all right. It's all right. Okay, Harry. All right. Hey, how about a couple of pictures? Hey, how about a couple of pictures? Hold it, Miss Marlowe. Look this way, Baron. Just one more, please. Thanks, that was swell. Isn't it terrible how those photographers are always around? I sometimes think nothing is sacred now they have those candid cameras. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> oh, I do not make a joke. I have no sense of humor. <laughs> you are the Miss Marlowe, n'est-ce pas? Well, uh, that's my name. Mm -hmm. You are the actress, Miss Constance Marlowe. I read about you. And you're the parent. Of, now, let me think. Uh, de, Mont, de, Mont, de, Mont. de Montigny. That's what I said. Of course I read about you. Everyone has. Oh, I think so. I thought one of the papers said you and the Baroness might be reconciled. No. It is a tragedy. She's a girl of solid character. But no. There was no, uh, no settlement. Oh, you mean that's the tragedy, that you didn't get a settlement? But of course, it is a tragedy for two reasons. First, I have no money. Second, I am ashamed. I find myself in a position of having married like an amateur, for nothing, for fun. Isn't it awful how things go wrong about money? Mother, by in law, he is what you call a chewing gum typhoon. Yes, I know. Bon, chewing gum is his business. Marriage is my business. Yet he gets the best of me. I am ashamed. It will not happen two times. We're in mountain time now. You better change your watches. Oh, dear. I wish everybody had the same kind of time. I get all mixed up. It's really four. Only we have to say it's five. And in New York, everybody thinks it's two. No, 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 no. In New York, it is, uh, uh, it is eight. In China, it is two. But it is yesterday. But we're not going to China. No. And if we don't get to New York until yesterday, we might as well have taken the train. Hmm? As you were saying? Huh? Oh, oh, well, you see, his uncle, it was his uncle who was supposed to leave Jimmy four million dollars. Well, he didn't. He left it all to this Linda Gray. Is that so? Here. Here. There she is. You know her? Uh-huh. She's not the type of girl at all that should have four million dollars. No. Oh, no. I mean, she's the quiet type. She's just alive to keep it all in the savings bank. As you say, there's an art to spending money. You know, it is indeed a happy chance you're on the plane, Miss Marlowe. May I please see you in New York? Oh, yes. That would be fun. Uh, indeed, it will be fun. Miss Marlowe, your breath is made up. Oh, thank you. Uh, good night, Perry. Good night, Miss Marlowe.
Well, Jimmy, now I understand. You're just watching your money, huh? You bet I am. Gee, it's why to see you. You know, Connie, those last weeks in San Francisco, I was so broke, I just didn't like to call you. My poor Jimmy. As if I care about you having money. How you doing now? Well, everything is going to be fine if I can keep grain checked till October. Connie, I tell you what we'll do. Why don't you have dinner with me tonight? You put on your red dress and... Will you ask my secretary, Mr. Barnes? I think he's lunching in the... Oh, well, never mind. Send these packages up to my suite. There's some more inside. And thanks for the demonstration. It's a very nice car. Tell Mr. Jones if I decide on it, I'll let him know. Thank you. It's the third new car this week. But that's not the same as Gray was in the office. Oh, yes, it is. But Jimmy, she was a mouse. Now she's a bird. Cuckoo. Oh, Jimmy. Hello, Gray. You remember Miss Marlowe? Oh, yes, I do remember Miss Marlowe. I didn't know you were in New York. <laughs> I just arrived. Oh, well, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but uh, I would like to see you at the office, Jimmy. Oh, oh me, pardon, I... oh, oh, pardon, pardon. I did not know. Would you present me to your friend? Oh, Miss Gray, this is the Baron de, uh, and Mr. Barnes, the Baron. Monsieur, mademoiselle, toujours à votre service. How do you do? Uh, well, as soon as you've finished, oh, I... Oh, we have finished. Who with Miss Gray, Jimmy? I'll be right along. Keep an eye on the, you know. Yeah. Call for yourself, huh? It is a miracle. So much money at the same time with such beautiful ankles. I'm alone here in New York, so quite often I shall need an escort. Okay, okay. If you want to be escorted, I'll escort you. Fine. I want to go out tonight. Oh, tonight? Yes, tonight. Well, uh, you see, Gray, it just so happens uh, I didn't know that you'd want to... Uh, well, what's the matter with tomorrow? I don't know. What's the matter with tomorrow night? Well, okay, then it's a date for... In addition to or not instead of. I don't know what you mean. I mean that I haven't decided whether we'll go out tomorrow night, but I've made up my mind about tonight. But, Gray, I... I can find dozens of secretaries, hundreds of them. Are you trying to make me quit my job? Not at all. You want to? You win. It's tonight. Fine. That'll be very nice. Black tie or tails, Miss Gray? Tails. Dinner? Yes. Theater? Uh-huh. Dancing? Mm hmm Have you some favorite haunt, Miss Gray? Well, I thought... Some pet night spot? Uh, some preferred dive? Or is it dealer's choice? Don't you think one of our guests will know where to go? Guests? One of those three men you're going to ask to go with us. Oh, those three men. Yes, those three mm -hmm. men. Sure, three will be enough. I know a football team you might like. Their forward passing is wonderful. Just three. Any special requirements, Miss Gray? Blondes or brunettes? College men. College men. Very good, Miss Gray. Gray, you look swell. Good evening, Gary. Great. By some happy chance, you are dining alone tonight, and you will do me the honor. Oh, no, not tonight, thank you. Soon, perhaps. For one that looks like you, New York can be a magic place. Let me show you New York. Perhaps sometime, thank you. Very kind of you. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Hello. If you knew how funny you look. Funny? <laughs> Having your hand kissed and taking it big. Who is that phony? You met him. He's a baron. A baron. <laughs> well, come on. The boys are waiting in the bar. I'm afraid there are a couple of drinks ahead of you, Gray. Okay? Oh, that's all right, Jimmy. This is our night out. Sure. You're not cross anymore. Cross? No. <laughs> they call me Jolly Barnes, the escort with a smile. <laughs> well, there they are now. Oh, oh right over here. This is Judge Reynolds, Mr. McIntyre, Mr. Pendleton. Do you do? How do you do? Gentlemen, this is Miss Gray. How do you do? Won't you join us and bring Miss Gray? Uh, yes, thank you. 
Uh, what would you like? A, a martini or Manhattan? Uh, yes. Uh, wait, uh, one dry martini and four scotch high. Yes. This is indeed a gala occasion, Miss Gray. I do hope we can all get home at a reasonable hour. I'm uh, having a little trouble with my asthma. Oh, too bad. Uh, waiter, may I have a pencil? Certainly. Uh, will you excuse me one moment? I, um, I have to write a note. Calling Baron de Montigny. Calling Baron de Montigny. Calling Baron de Montigny. Right. It's sort of bitter. Yeah. Want something else? No, I like it. Well, I guess we'll have to excuse you, Jimmy. What? I know you four college men have a lot of reminiscing to do. But great. You... <laughs> well, good night, Judge Reynolds, Mr. Pendleton, Mr. McIntyre. We must all get together again soon. Good night, Jimmy. I was so pleased. Yes, yes. Goodbye. Charming girl. Yes, but I, uh, I thought she was going to dine with us. Oh, she's on a diet. I don't understand her going out with that man. Well, I can. Uh, you know who he is? I think he's an unemployed head waiter. James, he's one of the world's most notorious fortune hunters. What, a fortune hunter? Why, his next to the last marriage is with the daughter of one of our clients, a splendid woman. Was that the young woman with the uh, teeth? Uh, yes, just the, uh, the aluminum heiress. Say, that fellow went through her fortune like a McCormick Reaper, if you'll forgive the expression. Oh, come on, he can't be that bad. <laughs> the guy you described sounds like René de Montigny. <laughs> exactly who it is. What? That international menace? These foreigners coming over here and marrying perfectly good American girls. We ought to run them out of the country. <laughs> come on, let's go somewhere where there aren't any women, huh? That's just me. <laughs> You must see Paris. I would love to show it to you. On a night in spring, the moonlight is on the chestnut trees. They are blooming now. Masses of moon-colored flowers. You know, Notre Dame is like less against the sky. We have a very big stars in Paris. And the little taxi horns go... Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else, eh? <laughs> on a roof, on the star, mm. where it is quiet. The garçon. your money in your other clothes. No, no, no. I have no money. But you have your fortune, so all is well. But, but I have no money either. With me, I mean. Oh, that's very simply arranged. Waiter, would you bring a blank check for Miss Gray, please? Yes. No, 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 never mind, never mind. I have one. <laughs> How extraordinary. Right? Very simple. The number of your room, there is place, your name, and everything arranges itself. That's good. Your lashes. It is too much. They cast a shadow on the curve of your cheek. Oh, do not forget to write the name of your bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, I had a grand time. Me too. 
Could I ask you a question? Maybe. Supposing I didn't have any money. But you have. Yes, I know I have, but supposing I didn't have. What I mean is, would you like me anyway? Would a man notice me or think I was nice? Linda, do you know all the time this evening I think to myself, I think, thanks heaven she has money. I see. But you do not see. Consider, for me to like someone with no money, that would be folly. I have made one mistake with chewing gum. I cannot afford another one that would end my reputation. I see. But I like you. Money or no money, I like you. Honestly? You are gay, you are pretty. You have a heart big as the Eiffel Tower. It's high and not so thin. <laughs> Thanks, heaven, you are rich. Oh, really? Bonsoir. Good morning, Miss Gray. Good evening, mister. Hello, Jimmy. You didn't have to wait up for me. Gray, are you sober? Certainly I am. Uh, that is, I am. I'd be quite all right if you did just stand still. Gray. Ooh. Ooh, I think I'm dizzy. Look! <laughs> Linda! Hello. Uh, uh, Celeste, um, uh, Maggie. Her night out. Well, you can't stay here. Whee! <laughs> well, I put you... Well, I'll take you to your room. Oh, that's kind. That's very, very kind. This is terrible. You're doing fine. Don't go down. Good night, darling. Don't you darling me. Oh, Bond, I do apologize. Clear case of mistaken identity. <laughs> Don't confuse us. He's after your money. What are you after, Jimmy? My money. Well, good night, Barnes, and, and thank you for your courtesy. Uh, monsieur, you are the secretary to Miss Gray, n'est-ce pas? I am, sir. Uh, would you please give her my compliments and remind her that we have a rendezvous for cocktails? With the greatest of pleasure, mon baron. Uh, bon. In the Rose Room or the Persian Room? Oh, the Persian Room at five. At five, sir. At five? Thank you, sir. And if I may venture a suggestion, sir. We? Oui? You'd better stay away from Linda Gray, you manicured male mannequin, or I'll knock your ears off. You do not like me, I think. You're darn right, I don't. Want to make anything of it? Make anything? Uh, je ne comprends pas. You comprenez très bien. Oh, talk English! Oh, so you, monsieur, you are very English. I'm an American. And if I had married as many American women as you have, I wouldn't go around saying, je ne comprends pas, when somebody offers to hang a shine on me. Shiner? Oh, you mean, do I wish to fight? Yes, do you wish to fight? With this fist? With a fist. Oh, no, monsieur, oh, no. I should say not. We call this our halo model. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll take this one. And the one with the pink roses, and the uh, black and red one. I'll send them right up to your suite. Mm -hmm. But there's one more you must see. Now, Baron, if you don't say this hat just is Miss Gray, I'm going to be surprised. You like it, Rennie? Come see, come back. It has its point. Uh, pardon. But there is not enough. Uh... <clears throat> oh. Voila. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, Jimmy? Will you come out here, please? I have something to tell you. All right, Jimmy. Excuse me a minute. My secretary wants to speak to me. Look at this. Well, did you know you were paying for the poses the good old Baron sent you? Shh, Jimmy. You knew you were paying? Of course I knew. Rennie has excellent taste. If 
he had money, he'd buy new flowers. The next best thing is to have them choose them for. Hmm. Did our pair choose that hat too? Yes. Miss Gray? Yes? <clears throat> they told me it's the desk to deliver this here. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, put them in the car, will you? It's in front. Rene, our picnic lunch is here. What's this? Ah, wait a minute. No picnic. Pardon? I'm Miss Gray's financial advisor, and I wouldn't advise her to go out with you in the open air. Hey, Monsieur. Rene. All right, then. No picnic, just as you Fine. say. Now, have them take this up to my suite. Okay. She doesn't want it. Goodness gracious. It's yet. terrible. Oh, hey! Uh, Dexter! Oh, Connie! Uh, get, get out, get Jimmy, out! Jimmy, I want to see you! Well, get in! We can dog inside! Get going! Where to? Uh, where were the cargo? But, Jimmy, where are we going? Picnic! Step on it! Picnic? But, Jimmy, you didn't bring any lunch! I don't think a picnic's so much fun without any lunch! No, we can grab something on the way! Step on it! A few death wish from the rich, and this beautiful wine will be ready for consumption. There. Let me serve your sherry a little more caviar. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rene. And a soupçon of pâté de foie gras. So. Add a little more wine, please. It's still so perfect. <laughs> My father, the Baron, used to tell me, Rene, always chill your vintage wine properly. Oh, I can't. I can still chew a little, but I simply can't swallow. Well, you wanted some lunch, didn't you? You know, Linda, I do not altogether trust that secretaire of yours. Really, Rene? No. To me, he's not the kind of man that should handle money. No. Mm -mm. And anyway, he is spying on us. Why, Rene, whatever makes you think that? You know, Connie, these foreigners are softies. They are? You bet they are. They need all sorts of props for romance. Caviar, vintage wine, shade. Where's their sincerity? Oh, I never thought caviar was so insincere. Now, give me a man who can make love out in the sunshine, with nothing to go on but a bag of caramel corn. I don't like caramel corn. Once in Avignon, when the vines were drenched in moonlight... Rene, take them some of our lunch. No. For that bounce to have followed us, that was rude. For him to eat our lunch, that's unnecessary. Please. Oh, we... Jimmy! Look what he's doing! What? He's bringing some of their lunch. Is that all? Oh! With the compliments of Miss Gray. Oh, thanks. Wait, Connie. I want to emphasize, this is not my idea. Well, thanks, Miss Gray. And tell her that we have just finished a delightful, simple, and satisfying luncheon. But, Jimmy! However, we don't want to be selfish, so take this to Miss Gray. Oh! Yeah. Jimmy, I have got to have a drink of water. What are you talking that way for? Talk to him. All struck up. I can't understand. It doesn't affect me that way. <coughs> drink of water. I, I, I can't. I can't leave him alone with her. But, Jimmy, he can't marry her. And if he's way out here in the country, I simply got to have a drink of water. Okay, come on. On second thought, I do not like this hat. Oh, look! A bull! The red tablecloth! Oh, do not disturb yourself, Cherie. It is not true that bulls dislike red. It is that they don't like anything. Besides, this is a cow. Are you sure? Oui. I'm positive. Well, she, um, she doesn't look very cordial. Cows are not emotional. Come, I'll show you. Well, you seem to know a lot about them. Oh, naturally. I'm a connoisseur of the bullfight. I didn't know you'd been in Spain, too. Oh, I've been everywhere, everywhere, except uh, Staten Island. I don't think I'd like a bullfight. Oh, one cannot like a bullfight. 
It is a passion. It is beauty. It is drama. A man, a beast. And death waiting for one. I still don't think I've Oh, that. Linda, imagine yourself sitting in the arena. La Fibou. The drums drum. The trumpets trump the call. The door of the torrier is open with a key with ribbon. The bull crashes out. Ah! What a bull! So fierce, so proud, so full of red blood. He snort, a magnificent snort. Fleur, I was merely impersonated. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Kippy, <sighs> I'm all wet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jimmy, it's not the same. What do you mean? That isn't the way you used to kiss me. Of course it is. What's different about it? Well, it was absent-minded, kind of. Oh, nonsense. This is the pose natural. And now, the Toro charges the Mileta, snorting very fierce. I sweep the Mileta back, the bull follows. Well, why don't you follow? Look, just miss me. But I am calm. I am the artist from toe to top. I repeat seven times. Oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Sherry. Please, don't be so phlegmatic. Now, now comes the awful, beautiful moment. My death is to choose the man or the beast. They face each other vibrating. <laughs> he draws himself up. He draws himself up. He swims his bullet under his sword up. He sights along this sword. He darts. He plunges and thrusts. Smart. It will not uh, uh, harm you! <laughs> How extraordinary! Je suis en préfecture de le tuer, je suis en préfecture. Oh, the poor, poor trap! Oh, back! Oh, Jimmy! No, monsieur, you misunderstand! Hey, now, let me go! Oh, Jimmy, don't be upset! Don't be upset! He didn't know it was going to happen, he couldn't help it. He was just in fun! What? Clean fun! Yes, I was very much amused! Amused? Yes, amused! Well, Maybe I should have knocked before I came in. Maybe you shouldn't have tagged along when you weren't wanted. Maybe you should mind your own business. Well, if you think I enjoy tagging along, you're very much mistaken. I will mind my own business. Good. Well, fortunately, I have a business I can mind. Really? Yes, I have a job, a real job. Where? With Judge Reynolds. Why, Jimmy, I didn't know you were going with Judge Reynolds. Oh, Jimmy, that's wonderful. What's <laughs> wonderful about it? I'm a lawyer, you know, a good one. Is that so? And as for you, Baron, I'm sure you'll be relieved to know that from now on you will no longer be irked by my presence. Irked? Irked? What is irked? If I ever catch you annoying Miss Gray, you'll find out. Come on, Connie. But this is perfect, Sherry. Now that the secretary is gone, we can relax. We are alone, just as we planned. Come on, Beth, Sherry, let's taste some of that delectable vintage, eh? You really think he's gone for good? Mais certainement, he is what you call good and soft. You will be bothered with him never again. <laughs> Rene, take me home. I, I think it's going to rain. <laughs> How extraordinary, eh? Huh? Bonjour, tu rends pas fait sur un sifflitant. Bon, pas tu rends, tu rends, choisi un fait si tu fais. There, there, Linda. 
There, there, <laughs> For heaven's sake, there, there. All right. Now, what is it? It's Jimmy. He's going with Judge Reynolds. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I'm so glad you're here. I certainly have succeeded. He's buckled down to work and he hasn't had a drink in weeks. He's got a fine job with a fine firm all through his own efforts. It's wonderful. Oh, I'm so miserable. I, I, I don't understand. Give him the money. He can, he can take care of it now. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I wish I were dead. Well, I, Linda, this is good news. I know. You've done exactly what you set out to do. Yes. All except... Except you and Jimmy? He doesn't ignore me now. He's aware of me, all right, but he can't stand me. Oh, surely you're exaggerating. Oh, no, I'm not. He'd gladly give up four million dollars just not to have to see me anymore. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I'm Nick. I just haven't got what it takes. You haven't? Well, by gad, if I were 30 years younger, I... Well... <laughs> Bless your heart. He'll be back any minute now. Just run down to his room and tell him our story about the new will. He's in room 520. It's a nasty little room. I, I chose it for him myself. Right. Monsieur? Cherie, it is I. Hello, Rene. You are sad. Good and sad. Sunk. And why are you sad? I'll be all right in a minute. Rene, I have no money. <laughs> oh, Linda, you're making a joke. No. Mais non. May we, definitely. Oh, Rene, really, don't take it so hard. This is tragedy. The first time in my life I mixed business with pleasure. And now look. Oh, I must think, I must think. Linda, you should not have told me so quickly. And now, so late in this season. I must make new plans. You're, you're going away? But of course, I must. I will have to go to Newport. <laughs> you laugh? You're darn right I laugh. Oh, please, Linda, do not laugh. I am very desolated. Rene, we've been good friends. The best of friends. Do something for me. After the day, I may never see Jimmy Barnes again as long as I live. But I still have today, what's left of it. You'll have to come up here to say goodbye. You still want this barn? Do I? This is Linda's last stand. He was jealous today, that's something. Rennie, teach me technique. Technique? Uh-huh. No, no, that is too much. Oh, please, 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 please. Linda, everything I have learned is at your disposal. Oh, thank you, Rene. Uh, first, I have to ask you a few questions. All right. Now, uh, about kissing. There is a certain art to offering one's face so the nose will not get in the way. So, let us try. Oh, it couldn't be that. Oh, but you cannot be sure. But I am because he's never kissed me. Oh, but these Americans. It is too marvelous. We'll have to go back far, far, far. Linda, I cannot help you all the time. You run a race with me backwards. Oh, I'm sorry. What perfume do you use? Oh, uh, only on the handkerchief. But who would kiss the girl on the handkerchief? Bring me the perfume. All right. Mr. Tepouvantable. Well, Jimmy, Linda tells me you're going with Judge Reynolds. Yes. Did you just leave Linda? Yes, just a few minutes ago. A tall, foreign-looking man came in just as I left. <laughs> My boy, I have some splendid news for you. A big, tall foreigner? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Read this. You know, I told you originally that nothing could be done until October. He went into Linda's apartment as you left? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> My boy, I want to see your face when you read the news uh, that's in that envelope. Excuse me, Mr. Duncan, wait here. I'll, I'll be back. I've got to... Uh, but uh, James! Yeah. James! Good? 
Not perfect, but good. What's wrong with it? I thought it smelled very, very gay. That just is what is wrong. It is too gay. You see, to be gay before, uh, c'est bien. To be gay afterwards, uh, c'est charmant. But to be gay during, non. Ah, come here. Just because he is tall on the hair a little. A breath, a whisper only behind the ear, so? On the tips of the ear, because uh, a little on the tips of the ear. On the mouth, too pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, I remember that. Uh, where else? Mm. Why there? Why? Well, it, I mean, it, it seems such a silly place. Oh, Lynn. <laughs> like roses in the sun, my dear Linda. To think I have to go to Newport and leave this. Oh. Why you cry? Do you dislike me so much? Then why? I'm awful. I liked it. Then you love me. No, Jimmy. I liked having you kiss me. Mais certainement. Who would not? Already go away! <laughs> I told you once I'd knock your ears off. I have a better idea now. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm going to knock them off, stick them on again, and keep knocking them off. Put up your hands. Please, Mr. Secretary, I'll go to Put up your hands. It was the most unfortunate we find. You're done. I put up your hands. I suck you as you stand. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, my London tailors. Uh, uh, Bond Street. Uh, a present for my second wife. This ring is my father's, Le Baron. Let's keep your father out of this. Oui, uh, well, monsieur. I beg you to reconsider. Shut up! Oh, uh, perhaps we're a little overcrowded here. If we move this table by the fireplace, there'll be more room. Okay. <coughs> oh, no, you don't. Well, I just want to move the couch, monsieur. Falling. Wait, monsieur. Stop dancing and fight. Quel dommage. I fear you will have what you call a shiner on the eyes. Don't mention it. I'm sincerely sorry, my old one. I try not to fight with you. It is not that you are not strong and eager. It is that I am the light heavyweight champion of France. Huh? Uh, amateur. <laughs> oh! There. This is Mr. Barnes. I'm in Miss Gray Suite. Send up a piece of steak, will you? Just a moment, Mr. Barnes. I'll connect you with room service. Hey, no, wait a minute. I don't want room service. I just want a hunk of steak. Yeah. It's not really in my department. I'd much, much rather you give your order to room service. The guest is always right. The guest is always right. The guest is always right. Yes, I'll take your order, Mr. Barnes. Well done, medium or rare? Raw, medium raw. Oh, 
Well, go ahead and laugh. No. Does it hurt much? No worse than a black eye. Packing? Yeah. Look, Ray, I seem to be a flopper tonight, Aaron, but then I can't go on annoying you. If I can't lick him with my fist, well, I step on his feet. He wasn't annoying me. He kissed me and I liked it. Liked it? You mean you liked it? Yes, I find it very attractive. Yeah, so did the eight or ten rich dames who married him. Jimmy, it was only three. Wait a minute. Are you serious about this, uh, about him? Why not? Why not? Craig, you're, you're not thinking of marrying him. Why not? Oh, I see. Well, since you are so anxious to get married... I'm not anxious well, to get Well, you're it. willing to marry Rene, that's what I call anxious. Well, why don't you marry me? I'm as big a heel as he is any day in the week. Uh, what did you say? I said, why don't you marry me? But, Jimmy, did you see Duncan? Sure, I saw him. What difference does that make? What difference? You mean you... you really want to marry me, even after... I know what I'm doing, don't I? Would I ask you if I didn't? No, of course not. I, I mean, that is... Oh, Jimmy! So right in there, Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan! Oh, here you are. I waited in that Mr. rather Duncan, depressing little... Jimmy and I are going to be married. What? Oh, splendid. Splendid. Dear child, I wish you every happiness. Yes, you told him the money was his, and he came right up here, knocked really cold, and, 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 and asked me to marry him. What did you say? Well, darling, you would have knocked him if the fight had lasted long enough. Yes, but what's this about the money? Well, I was just saying that even after you read the new will. Jimmy, you didn't know? Didn't you open that envelope? So, the money is mine. Yes, my boy. This new will makes the suit unnecessary. It's all yours. It's always been there. Just what is this? Where was this will found? Why, uh, there were a number of papers lying on and around uh, the bed, and uh, this was among them. Mm -hmm. This nice new will hasn't been lying under the bed since last March, has it? <laughs> no, no, naturally not. It just gathered up with the other papers, you understand? Just gathered up. Linda! Did you know about this? No, no, of course not. How could I? Then why did you keep saying, did you see Duncan? Are you sure you saw Duncan? Well, I knew then. Yes, of course I did. Mr. Duncan told me just before... Could we stop this game now? Or am I supposed to go on believing this? I told you I was a bad liar. Now look at the darn thing. <clears throat> Jimmy, I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, no, Mr. Duncan. Yes, Linda, it's the only way. Jimmy, you've been the victim of a little conspiracy between Linda and me. Oh. The money was left to her. This new will, of course, is a fiction, a little invention of Linda's and mine. Oh, Mr. Duncan, please! Well, Linda, what harm in telling him now? You've accomplished your purpose, you've set him on his feet, you've made a man of him. So, this noble little woman has just been thinking of my best interests, plotting and planning to make a man of me. Yes, Jane, that's exactly what she's done. Oh, Mr. Duncan, now you wrecked everything. Can't you see? Nobody likes a noble character. Now he'll never accept the money. It's pride. Pride! Listen, Gray, if I had any pride, would I be here working for you? You see, you see how sensitive he is? Sensitive? <laughs> Compared to me, an elephant is thin-skinned. I show you how much you've hurt my pride. I ask you to marry me. And why? Why? Because you had four million bucks. But now you've given it to me, I've got it, I'm going to keep it, and I withdraw my offer of marriage. Pride. <laughs> oh, you... 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 <laughs> James? Well, what are you looking at me like that for? You know I wouldn't touch the money if I were starving. But, James, you just said... Oh, never mind what I said. Let bygones be bygones. I wouldn't touch the money with a ten-foot pole. Now, Talon, there, now. Come on. Come in, who is it? Chevy. Oh, go away, Rizzo. I could hear that Mr. Barnes being disagreeable in the other room, so I came. <laughs> oh, Chevy, you mustn't do that. Oh, leave me alone. That is what I cannot do. 
for you. But then I can't afford it. But this is with my own money. I cannot help it. Oh, Rennie. Linda, I am like crazy. I try to go to Newport. I must go to Newport. But I can no longer do what I must. I can only run. What? You. I fight with myself. I say to myself, Renee, she has no money. And to my surprise, I answer myself, I love you. Oh, Renee. Renee, if you only knew how good it is to hear you say that right now. For years, there's a French firm who wishes me to sell champagne for them. It's very bad champagne. But for you, I would tell them yes. Oh, Renee. I know it is hopeless. I know you love these bounds. I know you will refuse me. But before I go away forever, I've got to say, Linda, let me work for you and take care of you. Linda, will you marry with me? Yes. Yes? Yes. Oh, Lynn. Come. Quick, 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 quick. Throwing her into Renee's arm. Fine, good. What do I care? It doesn't make any difference to me why I throw her. Goodbye, Mr. Duncan. Well, she's gone. You've lost her and you love her. What? Everything you've done proves that you love her. You love her? Uh, what is this? Here's the steak you ordered, sir. Steak? My eye. Yes, that's what I understood. Uh, now, let me buy. That's the good, sir. Yes, sir. Oh! Thanks. You're welcome. Municipal building, sir. Like old times. Ah, come say for come say. Municipal. Hey, Miss Gray. She just left. I it. know where. Against the rules. Where? To the municipal building. Okay, sir. taxi. Come on, come on. Here. What's this? Uh, a tip, uh, a steak. Uh, municipal building, and I pay your fine. Three previous marriages? Three. I'll have to see a divorce decree. But certainly, mon vieux, voila, voila. Beef, aluminum, and chewing gum. See, my chérie, I'm always prepared. René, uh, are you sure you're not making a mistake? But, chérie... I don't know why it is, but I always get these three-time losers right at closing time. We go now to the city clerk. You are fortunate, Cherie, that I know all these things. But, Rene, are you positive you're not making a mistake? But, of course, Cherie. How do you do, Miss Gray? Oh, good afternoon, Judge Rennie. I want to present Miss Hoggishauser. Oh, how do you, how do, you do? do? Say, aren't you the one Bell that... Bell <laughs> right in here is the Corporation Council's office. But... <laughs> right in here. Linda, that was Miss Hoggishauser. But who is Miss Hoggishauser? Big Iron, the Big Iron Hoggishauser. She's the Big Iron heiress. René, are you sorry? Sorry? No, Cherie, I've made my choose between love and business. Well, I thought maybe you were making a oh. mistake. Maybe. Here. Mr. Thurber. Hey, who do you think you... Well, hello, Baron. I haven't <laughs> seen you in a couple of years. <laughs> you see, I'm known to everyone around here. Yes. Uh, who's the lucky girl this time? Oh, Linda, this is Mr. Thurber, the city clerk, my fiancée, Linda Gray. Uh, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. It's after hours, you know, but well, for an old customer like you, Baron, step right inside. Let me in! Hey! Let me in! Did you issue a license to open up here? Did a foreigner take out a license to marry my girl? Hey, young man! 
Ed, open, open this door. Will you come in here and witness this marriage? No. Did you? What? Good. Now we have our witnesses. Now then. Do you, Rini? Linda. Wait a minute. I've got to tell you something. Linda, all this ermine blanket business, that's not your stuff, really. Jimmy, what are you doing? A girl like you doesn't need a lot now, of Now, Mr. Secretary, will you Now, you stay out of this. Linda, $50 a week may not seem like much, but it's really... Please, a, please. There's a wedding going on here. Let's have it quiet. It's a swell income. You can have everything anyone really wants. Who is uh, this man? Uh, my business manager. I mean, my ex. Linda, Abraham Lincoln never earned $50 a week. Uh, well, suppose you folks work out your budget later. Now then, do you, Rini, Claude? Uh, yeah. Linda, we can have yeah. a swell little house out in the country. Charles, our man. With trees and crickets. Oh, Linda, it's plenty. Jimmy, what are you talking about? Baron de Montagny, take think this I'm woman for your life. My lawful... salary, you goose. Where did wife? I do, but first I must dispose oh, of it. Be quiet. Jimmy, what's your salary got to do with me? To do with you? Well, of all in our Linda, at a time like this, you ask me what my salary. Oh, Linda, don't be a dope. Jimmy, are you proposing to me? Linda, the ceremony of marriage is a solemn rite. Nobody knows that better than I. Let me be quiet. Jimmy, answer me. Answer. Now, what is there to answer? I'm just... Oh, Linda, we could have a swell time on $50 a week. Jimmy, do you love me? Lots of evenings we won't go out. We'll just stay home and read and play with the kids. Stop talking like that. You're spoiling my wedding. I know, old man. I'm, I don't blame you for being annoyed, but I just had to tell what Linda... What did you have to tell Linda? Oh, nothing except that... Oh, well... That I was an awful fool, that she's the most generous, the loveliest, well, that I love her. Why, Jimmy Barnes, that's the first decent word you ever spoke to me in all your life. Mm -hmm. But if you think you can walk in here and browbeat me in the middle of my wedding... That's what I say. Let's get on with this. Do you, Rini Claude, whatever your bastard name is. What's going on here? Please. A slight misunderstanding, mm -hmm. but it will arrange itself. We came here for the wedding ceremony of... Uh, you and Miss Gray? Well... Stop! Oh, Linda, have I not teach you? So. Thank you, René. You see? And now you will please present me again to the most charming Miss Hoggershauser. <laughs> 